skeletal muscles. Without them, you wouldn't be able to move around. Muscles provide the force that is needed to pull on your bones to allow for all of the body movements that we can do. They do this by contracting. When a muscle contracts, it gets shorter and pulls on bones to create movements of the skeleton. But how do they contract? What's really going on? Let's find out. First, we should understand some basics of muscle structure. A muscle is made up of bundles of muscle fibers surrounded by connective tissue. Each muscle fiber is actually a single long cylindrical cell that has lots of nuclei and mitochondria. Inside of each muscle fiber, we have many smaller myofibrils. Each myofibril is divided into sections called sarcomeres. These are made largely of two proteins that allow muscles to contract, actin, and myosin. So how does the structure of a muscle allow for the muscle to contract? To find out, let's zoom in on a sarcomere and see what's going on. The way that muscles contract is by shortening the sarcomeres that make up each myofibril. You see that this is accomplished when myosin heads pull on actin filaments. Now let's examine how this happens in more detail. When you decide in your brain that you want to move muscle, you send nerve impulses that trigger the muscle to contract. When the impulse reaches a muscle fiber, this triggers the release of calcium ions. This calcium attaches or binds to a protein complex called troponin. This causes troponin to change shape and move another protein, tropomyosin, so that it no longer blocks the myosin binding sites on actin. Now that these myosin binding sites are open, myosin heads can bind to actin. This attachment of myosin to actin is called a cross bridge. But in order to power muscle contraction, energy is obviously needed. This energy comes in the form of ATP. ATP binds to myosin and breaks the cross bridge connecting it to actin. Then ATP is broken down into ADP and phosphate. This breakdown releases energy that powers up the myosin head causing it to change its position to a high energy configuration and reattach to actin. This position of the myosin head makes it like a spring or loaded catapult. It has potential energy stored up. So when ATP and phosphate are released, the myosin head snaps back to its original low energy configuration, pulling on actin as it does so. So the actin slides and shortens the sarcomere. After this, ATP again attaches to myosin, breaking the cross bridge and allowing the process to start over. As the cycle continues, the muscle continues to contract. When you decide to stop contracting your muscle, you stop sending nerve impulses, so calcium stops being released. Without calcium ions, troponin changes shape and causes tropomyosin to cover the myosin binding sites again. Now myosin heads can no longer bind to actin, so actin slides back to its original position, the sarcomeres lengthen, and the muscle relaxes. Because actin filaments are sliding past myosin in this model of muscle contraction, it is often called the sliding filament model of muscle contraction. That's probably a lot to take in. I'd recommend trying the muscle contraction game linked in the description to practice what you just learned. And don't forget, there are many more learning games and experiences to be had on the Bioman Biology website, biomanbio.com.